A spine that can optimally bend forward and back, lean and twist, frees up the rest of your body and it reduces the burden on your spine's neck, shoulders, lower back, hips, knees, ankles, and feet. Today, do simple spine mobility positions to use daily. The goal of today's exercise is to gently stretch your deep spinal muscles, the ones responsible for your ability to lean, bend forward, back and forth, and twist. The right ratio of spinal stability and mobility is the deciding factor when it comes to moving your body freely. In the past videos, we have leveraged the way your body works. We've layered exercises on one at a time that promote stability of the spine. Now we're ready to layer on one exercise with two positions to help you maintain and improve your spine's mobility. You're gonna do the two positions in real time today with me right now. You want to pause, gather a few supportive props like yoga blocks, pillows, towel, even a step stool. The tighter your hips and legs, the higher the prop will most likely be. So gather what you think might work best. If you watch all the way through and then come back to the section, the timestamps are in the description so you can easily navigate the video to your liking. For our first step in today's exercise, it's to figure out the best prop height for you. Having the props that work for you is crucial and warrants the time it takes for you to find the right height for your bio-individual body. Position controls 99% of exercise's effectiveness. You, of course, will be guessing at the height you'll need initially, but getting into the position for the first time will give you the feedback to figure out the right prop size. My suggestion is to use a prop that is around the height of the size of the tall yoga block. Just as with your butt slide though, your prop has nothing to do with how good you can do something. So if you need two blocks or a stool in a block because your hips and back are tight, that's the height that's right for you to succeed. With your prop option next to your hip within comfortable reach, we're gonna ask you to roll down to lie on your back using a head support, of course, if needed. Slide your arms upward to the shoulder level. Palms are in the position that is most comfortable for your shoulders. So for some of you, that will be palms down like the animated figure, or for others, it will be more comfortable having your palms up. For some, palms up, palms down, won't matter. Check in on your head and neck positioning. Make sure your shoulders feel relaxed. Then is your neck nice and long. We're gonna begin sliding one foot upward towards your buttocks. Lift the leg, place your foot below your knee. In this position, you're gonna slowly allow your bent leg to lower crossing the midline of your body. Your hip and buttock cheek, even your back, will lift up and off the floor. You'll rest your knee on the prop that you have. Pause here to adjust your prop. Many times the prop needs to be way higher than anticipated. Maybe you're gonna stack of the yoga blocks. Maybe you're gonna put a towel on top of the stool. The goal is that your knee is resting on the prop and you feel a comfortable stretch, possibly up the back of your leg, maybe in your buttocks, or maybe in your back region. Any of these areas, depending on what's tight on you, you want to have that be a comfortable stretch. Over time, all of these will elongate until the entire stretch is comfortable, and then what you'll do is lower your prop. So for today, your prop should be the height that allows your knee to rest on it and passively feel a stretch. Please don't hang your knee in the air and think, well, it's close enough. We want your knee to be resting so that we can create a passive stretch. Once you've found that sweet spot of support and stretch, inhale through your nose for a nice, slow eight seconds. Here's a tip. If you place the word Mississippi between each count, it's a pretty accurate way to keep track of a second. So your inhale will be one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight. And relax, allow the air to come out while we're walking through this instructional. And releasing is just as important as how you got in. So please 
contract your abs. Your mouth is open, so any air that's in there will be pushed out. With your abs contracted, you're going to move back to center, take your bent leg off your leg, place it on the floor, bring your other leg up, so now that you have a release in your back. Now we're gonna switch sides. Slide your other foot down, keeping the other one that's close to your buttocks, lift it up, and place it again just below the knee. Take your time, slowly allow the bent knee to lower till it reaches your prop. Relax into the stretch, then inhale through your nose. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale, relaxing, melting into that stretch. Beautiful. Now engage your abs, return to center, draw up your other leg, and pause for a moment to release. Now that you've practiced once, I encourage you to pause, run through each side again, and this time make a mental note if the stretch feels the same on the left and the right. If one side is noticeably tighter, repeat the stretch on that tighter side. Repeating the stretch twice on one side can help reduce a discrepancy if you have one. Over the upcoming days, maybe weeks, the two sides should slowly come closer together. And when they do, you'll revert back to equal reps. Some clients need to repeat the exercise using a three to one ratio when releasing a really tight side. An example of this is to do your right side, left side, then right. That would be a two to one ratio or right, left, right, right. That's a three to one. The important takeaway tip here is to know if you begin with an exercise program and you have a discrepancy between something on your right and your left, whether you're working for flexibility or strength, if you exercise each side for the same amount of time, chances are you're going to be maintaining or increasing your discrepancy. And this is often why many people do an exercise program following along the instructor's class and then injure themselves and they don't know why. Having detailed information on how to adapt what you're asking your body to do when you start doing it is the key to making improvements that create the balance. Then you can follow someone's exercise program with a better chance of not creating an overuse injury. And it's why I make these instructional videos instead of just uploading exercise routines for you to follow. Check in weekly for your personal progress. Spine mobility position two, which is very similar to position one, but you're probably placed against the wall. And I'd like you to line it up so initially it's against the wall and in line with your hip. You're gonna be positioning yourself parallel to a wall and the distance between your side body and the wall should be approximately the length of your legs. Another tip is often the length of our arms is pretty close. If you're able to stretch out and the wall is far, far away, I'd suggest scooching over before you even start it. You're gonna roll down the line your back just like you did before, using the head support if you need it. Slide your arms upward to your shoulder level. Take a moment to relax. Check on your head and neck positioning. Check on your shoulders and your lower back. You're going to begin, just like you did before, by sliding one leg, place the foot just below the knee on the leg that's still extended. This time, as you rotate, you're going to slowly allow your bent leg that's lowering to the side, that's crossing your midline, to slowly straighten it, having the goal of placing your ankle on the prop and your foot on the wall. It may be that your leg does not straighten all the way or that the block should be positioned lower than your hip, further down the wall. Whatever works for you today is where to start. Maybe you can straighten your leg, but your foot can only have the ball of it touching and not the entire bottom of the foot. Slowly, as the back of your legs are released by doing the butt slide up the wall exercise, you'll notice you can move your foot closer to the wall and that you can straighten your leg a bit more and also get closer to 90 degrees. I promise the slower you go, easing your body into these positions, the faster you will get there. Many times, the prop needs to be higher than anticipated. Again, you might need to stack a couple. Maybe you use the step tool with a towel for padding. Take the time to reposition yourself and your props so the height offers you again a nice gentle stretch behind the back of your leg. Maybe you're going to feel this in your calf, maybe behind your knee. Make sure wherever you're feeling it that it is a gentle stretch. Slowly you're going to work up to this 90 degree position. If you happen to be very flexible, just now going above the direct line of your hip won't be offering you optimal stretching. Instead, keep it straight out from your hip and your foot flat on the wall at the height of your hip. For a good week, you're going to want to place your focused action on getting in 
and out of these two positions because it's going to take about a week for you to ease into the actual prop positions that's right for you. Your body most likely hasn't been in this position in a long time and what will happen is muscle memory will kick in and you'll progress pretty rapidly. Take a week, get in, do a breath in of eight counts, a breath out of eight counts, contract your abs, do the other side, take the time to adapt the height of your props. It may be that you're actually changing it every day. It may be that it doesn't change till the end of the week. We want to go the speed that's right for you. Then for week two, go ahead and use week's nine to 12 video that has these two positions added at the end where the focus will really be on using your breath to stretch the deep spinal muscles from your inside out. That we have that capacity is amazing. Please remember, simple doesn't mean easy, and as with every exercise we have incorporated so far, the end result helps you release built up daily tension in your neck, shoulders, back, knees, ankles throughout your entire day, improving your athletic abilities, reducing wear and tear on your joints, and as crazy as it sounds, these same exercise positions and techniques support your digestive system, respiratory system, nervous system, plus it just takes a few moments each day. When it comes to your year for self-care, the 52 weeks of self-care with Mo, this is the third group of muscles that have the biggest influence on your entire body. Today's two position exercise stands on its own and will offer you benefit when you use it daily. It will also be included in the weeks nine through 12 of the 90 days, five simple exercise routine video for those of you who are doing that series. My suggestion is when you wrap up trying out your right and your left side position one and right and left side position two, that you end the sequence with our one simple exercise that releases our psoas and back. And that is having your feet at least hip width apart, allow the knees to meet in the middle and inhaling through the nose, again, stretching from the inside out, using your abdominal cavity and the deep, deep breath, stretching everything. And then a nice, slow exhale into a deep relaxation. Closing with a simple self-care tip to incorporate throughout your day. And that is, if you know that when you slouch in your chair, hunch over when you're standing, lean to one side, that your paraspinal muscles, the deep ones, need to work harder to support your spine. And since we do that all day long, we even do all three while we're sitting for long periods. If you're cognizant of this and you straighten up throughout the day, now that it's front of mind, you'll be using your core muscles. They'll be getting stronger and your deep spinal muscles will get to relax, improving their mobility. There you go, two positions that'll help your spine mobility. As always, I wanna take a moment to thank those of you who are sharing the videos. It is making all the difference in the world. Over the next four weeks of exercising with next week's video, you will be wrapping up the 90 days, five simple exercise series, and we will then be moving on to the body's three nutrients that have the biggest influence on our body. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.